What up, everybody? This is Big Elbow, like always, chilling with the two little vatos locos forever. Averno, Atlantis. And uh, today I'm going to show you the uh, stuff I picked up at a big dollar sale. This is my haul from a big dollar sale in Fresno at a shop called Wonderland Comics. Uh, it's a good shop. They got tons of back issues. The owners are cool guys. Uh, I had a I had a great time hunting. It was nice to be out there again. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna show you what I got. Before I went to the shop, before I went to Wonderland, I stopped at the flea market, and uh, I got I didn't get much. I got a couple books. I gotta go with hook up with Tumoa over there in Fresno and let him show me what's up with the flea market because. I've only the, I've been there a couple times and there's only one vendor that I can find and he doesn't have much. Anyways, I got these two books for a dollar, so fifty cents each. Children of Fire number two of three. I never heard of that, but I'm a big fan of Richard Corbin, and uh, so I know the art is good. Browse through it, look good to me. And then I got Shadow Cabinet number one. Um, I'm a big fan of John Paul Leon. This must have been after his Static run which I'm also collecting. I got about an issue to go on that. Um, I didn't realize he did this, so I seen it, I opened it up, and I realized that he that was his, his art on the interiors. So I'll probably start looking for these now. The characters don't look so cool, but you know, the art I'm sure is good. For 50 cents, I'll, I'll pick it up. So this is the stuff that I got from Wonderland. Uh, I'm gonna show first my Mar the DC Marvel stuff, and then, um, after that, I'll show my indie stuff. So if, if you're one into one thing and not the other, then, you know, watch the part you like. Um, I love those uh, 80s black and white indies that are worth nothing, but they're worth a lot to me personally. Uh, I just enjoy that shit a lot. But anyways, uh, so let me show you these DC books first. I got the question, number one. Um... Bill Sankevich on the uh, at covers by uh, Dennis Cohen and Il Bill Sankevich. Awesome covers. I've been on a kick with The Question lately. The Question, Vigilante, The Shadow. I don't know why these guys have been uh, on my brain lately, but there's a question number two. Number one, here's number two. And again, uh, Dennis Cohen, Interior Art. If you ain't checking out the question, the uh, deaths of Vic Sage, read that shit. That's good. Uh, here's number three. And I was looking into it um, about maybe just buying the, the trade paperback of the question for, you know, the question stuff. They're expensive, man. I don't know what the hell's the deal with that. I'm like, this is a cheaper way to get it. And there's number four. I like these covers, too. Sienkiewicz on, on on inks and Cohen on pencils is always good good stuff. And there's number six, number five. So I figure uh, I got the that should be about the first story story arc, I would think. First five issues. I bet you if they collect the collected version, would probably be the first five issues. I, that's what I got to figure. They have they had more, but I figure I'll read these and then decide if I want to keep going with that. And like I said, uh, Vigilante. Um, Trevor Von Eden did the interiors on this one. I don't buy all the Vigilante, but certain issues that I know have uh, certain artists, like any of the ones with Dennis Cohen, um, this issue is Trevor Von Eden. I'll pick it up, especially for you know for a dollar. This one, uh, I gotta say, this was a cover by, which I try, I really don't do very often, but this was a cover by um, that Ill Bill cover was just too much for me man I had to pick it up and then I got a uh, static number eight uh, shadow war tie-in um, again I'm picking up all the John Paul Leone issues of static and uh, that's number eight so I think I just need six and seven and I'll have all the John Paul Leone issues Sweet ass uh, Walter Simonson cover here. So that was the DC stuff. Now this is the Marvel stuff. Um, chipping away at this uh, this uh, 
John Romita Jr. run on the Avengers, the Heroic Age. There's number five, and here's number seven. Uh, not sure how many more issues of that I need. I was able, man. I was able to find a, a low-grade copy of the one key issue of that run with the um, Iron Man with Infinity Gauntlet. Had a little bit of water damage on it, but I'm not in it for that anyways. I'm in it for the, the I want to collect the run and read the book, read the story. And then uh, again, run filler, Avengers 55. This is right after the, um, right after the Kang Dynasty. I only need a couple more issues of that in uh, a couple more issues out of the disassembled story and then I'll have that uh, that run completed of the issues that I want anyways and uh, speaking of filler I got these uh, Iron Man these are the John Romita Jr. Uh, issues which are pretty much the Armor Wars plus like one or two two books there's number uh 258 and 264 and then you heard it here first Big Elbow is specking on Casper Cole just kidding um, I always thought this run of Black Panther look cool with Black Panther as a gun toting trench coat wearing vigilante um I get apparently it's not really it's not T'Challa it's uh, some other guy named Casper Cole wearing the the costume but these covers are bad man these uh I'm not the biggest Andy Kubert fan but these are good covers and I like I said I always thought that he looked cool it looked pretty badass to see Black Panther as a as a uh Gunslinging Vigilante. There's number 51. 52. The story is called Black and White. I like these covers a lot. This is one of my favorite ones. Number 53. And the, the, the art looks decent. I think Christopher Priest is a good writer. The art's not bad in these. Oh, I love this cover right here. I don't know if this is a, um, an homage or not. But it really reminds me of the um, Deathstroke, the cover to Deathstroke number one, and then there's been a couple homage covers to that. But it, that's what it reminds me of. I just think that looks badass. Here's number 55 and number 56. Um, this isn't the Cubert cover. I don't know who that is. It kind of reminds me of that guy that draws Marvel zombies. I'm not sure if that's who it is or not. That's what it reminds me of, but anyways, no, not seriously specking on Casper Cole, but you never know. So I'd rather get these now before someone does get that stupid idea, and then these books end up going up in price for no reason. I have I've wanted to read those for a long time. Uh, another run filler, Captain America number twenty three. Um. This is a Marvel Knights uh, little story arc with uh, uh, Chris Bachelot, uh Dave Johnson covers. I like Chris Bachelot and um, I really like his Captain America. This was the last issue I needed for, of that of his run on Cap. Then I got the oh excuse me. What if Wolverine was an agent of Shield? That's just uh, my brother had that when I, when we were kids, and I just remember I just thought it was an awesome issue. I think it was the first. First uh, Rob Liefeld I ever seen, but yeah, that, that's an awesome issue. If you've watched the uh, cartoonist Cafe guys, they just they did a, a like a video on that issue not too long ago. If you're interested in it, and then I got some. Uh, a, I met a guy named Ricardo while we were digging, and um, I helped him find a couple of. He was looking for the amalgam books. And I told him that I had seen um, that I had seen Doctor Strange Fate, and I had seen um, Bruce Wayne Agent of Shield. And then right before he left, 
I also had found a, a Thorion. And so anyways, he said he was trying to get all the amalgam books, so I helped him find those. And he put me onto these. He said uh, that these were worth something. He already had them, so he wasn't tripping. But he said um, that I should grab these, and if I want, at least I could flip them if I'm not if I'm not interested in them. Um, so there's number nine of Marvel Knight Spider-Man, Mark Millar, Terry Dotson. I guess this is the one that, that goes for something. Um, I'll probably read it and then see if I want to keep it or not. I'm not the biggest Terry Dodson fan. I like his covers, but his interior is not, not as much. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll figure it out. Now, this, I did not realize I needed in my life until I seen it in front of my eyes. Ghost Rider number six. Uh, Richard Corbin drawing Ghost Rider. Like, fuck, how can you go wrong with that? I didn't know that even was a thing. I'm going to look and see if there's more issues that he drew. On top of that, um, I actually like Daniel Way's writing. I enjoyed his uh, Deadpool stuff. So yeah, that's fucking pretty awesome. I looked at the in, browsed the inside real quick, and that's good shit. Uh, then last of the, pretty much last of the Marvel stuff. This is Marvel Epic. Um, Stray Toasters by my man Ill Bill. That is number three. And here's number four. So I got that whole series now. I've collected out of uh, bargain bins. I got no idea what that shit's about, but I, it's just... This is Bill Sienkiewicz, so I'll give it a try. At least I know the art will be interesting, at the very least. Oh, one more Marvel book. Uh, Death Blow and Wolverine number two. I have number one already, so... Uh, Looking forward to reading that. Aaron Weisenfeld, man, he did some crazy... He did some dope artwork. I wish he had done more. And that's it for my Marvel stuff. So now I'm going to get into my indie... Get on my indie shit. 80s black and white books. That I love. Well, before that... Before I get to that, I got to show this one. Uh... Vampirella Strikes. I'm not a Vampirella fan, um, but I am a fan of this girl right here that's doing the cosplay cover. She's an actress named uh, um, Sasha Knob. Knob. And uh, there's a movie called Blackmail that I seen her in, and I just thought she was super hot, man. It has. Uh, it's a fucking. It's a good movie. It's called Blackmail. It has uh, Bokeem Woodbine. And it has uh, that kid from Casper from uh, Kids. It's just, it's a tripped out movie, man. It's low budget. It's fucking funny, though. It cracks me up. I'm not sure it's supposed to be funny, but I just, yeah, it, it's it's definitely, there's humor in it for sure. But uh, it, not, it might not all be intentional humor, but it's still... I love that movie, man. If you get a chance, check it out. Maybe you might not like it, but it's still... It's, I, I love it. Um, anyways, it's pretty beat up. I didn't realize how beat up it was. I might not have bought it, but I told myself if I ever seen this, just to grab it, because she's not in that many movies and not on that many cover comics of cover book. I mean, covers of comic books. So I said, fuck, I'm going to grab it if I ever see it. Also, uh, I didn't think that that was the same. When I seen McGinnis, I figured it was somebody else, a different McGinnis. But that's Ed McGinnis' art on the interior. It's, it must be his real early stuff because it doesn't even... I wouldn't even recognize, recognize his style. But yeah, that's that. Then I got this... Um, Young Master number two. I, just, I discovered an issue of Young Master a while back. It was a Young Master special with art by... Uh, Alex Nino, and that shit was bad. Um, I seen it, I got another one of the regular issues, and the um, Val Mayeric, his art is good too, man. So I'm gonna pick up the first few issues and see if I like it. I already have issue number one. Here's issue number two, and then I got. I think this is the only other issue that Alex Nino does, is issue number six. So I was real happy to find that. So I'll probably just fill in the 
right, between one, two, and six, and try to fill that in at some point. Unless it sucks, but I don't think it will. Chuck Dixon, I enjoy all of his superhero stuff. It's always at least a fun read. So I have hope, I have high hopes for that. Then I got this uh, Megaton number one. Uh, it's pretty dirty, but I just thought that looked cool. And I remember seeing it in other people's haul videos, so I think there's something to it. Not sure exactly, but I, man, those are good hands. And I think it's a cool looking character. I gave it a quick browse through and the interior art looks pretty sweet. So I just, I picked that up. And look at cover price, $2. So I got it for half off. And that was back when shit, $2 was more than it is now. And I was real happy to grab these Dragon Force Chronicles. So these are like collected. These are, There's like three issues in each one of these of uh, Dragon Force, which is um, Dale Keown pre-Marvel, before he went to Marvel. I love that shit, man. That black And this is... The original issues, I think some of them are in color, but these are all black and white. Um, that's book two. I already have book one. There's book three. Book four. That was bad. And book five, the last one. So I think that's actually collects the whole Dragon Force um, run. And yeah, like I said, I'm a big Dale Keown fan, especially that old shit. When I, like, I remember when I realized, it, when I recognized his art from Hulk, I was all excited, like, oh shit, that's the guy, because he used to draw, he draw, uh, he drew a few um, uh, Air Cell books. He drew Dragon Ring, Volume 2, Dragon Force, uh, Samurai, and maybe a couple other random issues here and there. Anyways, yeah, man, I had a great time hunting again. Um, anytime that Wonderla Wonderland has one of these sales, I'm on it. I'm going to go check it out. Again, they have so many back issues. If you live in this area and around uh, Fresno, Central California, go check them out. It's worth it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, hit me in the like. Hit the like, the subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, hit me in the comments. I always enjoy that. And thanks for watching. And yeah, that'll do it. Uh, so, who knows? I got nothing coming up that I know of as far as uh, comic hunting. So, uh, I'll be back when, whenever I whenever I do some get to do some hunting again. Thanks again for watching. And like I always say, get off of YouTube and read some fucking comics.